Firing off right away. I take it that you are home in a very special room in your home with what you've got surrounding you. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my music room. This is where I, you know, make music, play the guitar and uh, have fun. So this isn't a trophy room per se. Well, I, I guess it's a little bit of that, you know, it's just uh, to inspire me and out of gratitude on my part for what I've been given in terms of a career and music and, and those kind of things, you know. I wanted to take you back to the near the beginning of your career. I thought it was appropriate with uh, this past year losing Ian Tyson. I know that you started with uh, with his band. I thought you might want to share some thoughts or some memories from that time period. Well, I owe D Ian a debt I can never repay. Um, he gave me my first real chance in the music business. Um, I went from playing in my mother's basement in North York uh, to uh, uh, touring internationally with Ian and Sylvia. And uh, they I replaced a great guitar player, Amos Garrett. I was right, right around the time I turned 21, you know. And uh, uh, I love Ian and Sylvia. And like I say, they opened the door. They taught me so much uh, about music and professionalism and uh, life. So uh, I love the guy. Is there anything in particular you can think of that still applies today as far as a lesson or something you picked up during that time period that even in 2023, it's like that that still holds true? His respect for his audience, you know, like you you, you give the best show you can, uh, no matter. And, and, and maybe it's a small audience, maybe it's a big audience, but you go out there and you focus. Um, uh, he had a work ethic that was just great, you know, in terms of like writing songs and, and uh, his approach to his craft. Uh, so, you know, he loved it. And that's what I get from him. So back to you here in 2023. How, how are you with titles like legend and icon and things like that? It doesn't mean that much. I mean, it's nice. I'd rather think people say positive things. But, you know, at the end of the day, like most artists, when you start out, people say negative things, you know, like this guy's no good. It's weird, whatever. And, and maybe I wasn't at times. But the thing is, uh, later on, they say that stuff. It's all stuff people say, you know. Well, something you're probably more used to hearing is uh, the categorization of singer songwriter, a boss on the guitar. And I would dare say kind of a third title, and that is you've carved out your own space in the canon of rock and roll with those kind of tongue in cheeks, edgy, sometimes raunchy, fun songs. You, your songs individually are characters. Uh, was that just your own authentic self coming through in songwriting or how much of a conscious effort did you put into? I'm going to make a, a different song, a little fun song. It's all following my heart. Um, you know, just doing what I really wanted to do. You know, I did notice the songs changed, though, you know, Ben, when um, first I was playing to audiences that had never no idea who I was, you know, I just go into a bar and you play, right? You got no records, no airplay, no nothing. And, and the thing is, I had to have songs that you could get in in the middle of the song and still feel like you were part of it, you know, like like a song like Bump Up Ahead or something like that, where um, if you let's start in the middle, you, you can still feel what it's about. Later on, I could do songs that had a sort of an involving, uh, evolving story, like Laying Pipe or something like that, where there's a, a, a sort of a progression in the verses, you know, so I noticed that. But I, I tried to do what I want to do, you know. Did you run into a lot of instances of, uh, button heads with radio stations, record companies, uh, the powers that be in the music business with songs that were of that edgy nature. Like how many times did you have to fight like, oh, we can't play this because it's talking about sex, David. You no, know, it's a funny thing. Being a little different, which I think I am, um, is a curse in the beginning, but it's a blessing later on because people will go to that particular artist, whoever, me or anybody, um, who has something a little individual. You know, it, I mean, my first album, uh, the one with Hypnotize and Boogie, Bearcat and those songs on it, um, it took two years to sell. We recorded it two years before um, uh, any label would release it, you know. So uh, um, there was some resistance. But as I say, it's turned into a, a good thing. Because people, if they want to see what we do, they come and see our band. You know, it's not just a generic band that you can go and see, blah, blah, blah. Do you have a, kind of a funny sense of, wow, the world's changed when you, when you think of some of the pop songs that are being put out today and some of the content and think of the battles that you had back in the day with your songs. And that was more of an artistic uh, double meaning. But now they hit you over the head with some of the salacious content. Are you like, things have changed quite a little bit? 
They've changed enorm enormously. And part of it is the uh, demise of record companies, um, you know, which were a filtration system, good or bad. Um, uh, now we have the internet. So, I mean, you can go on the internet and do or say or sing virtually anything, right? You've kept pretty uh, prolific and proficient uh, in decades, like uh, spanning so many different generations of, I dare say. It's interesting we talk about the the song content and the songwriting, but do you feel disrespected as a guitarist or do you feel you get enough due? Because when people think of Dave Wilcox, the casual fan might hear on the radio and be like, he's got those fun songs. But you're an epic guitar playing guy, if, you, if I dare say so. Do you think you get enough due instrumentally? Well, thank you. You know, um, there's I had a, I knew a wise old guy who's passed away and he used to say um, there's you get what you want. Then there's you get what you need. And then there's you get what you get, you know, and I'm very happy with what I've gotten. I don't feel uh, disrespected or anything like that. People come to our gigs, our band you know, has a ball playing for different audiences. And we don't use a set list, by the way. We just go and play, you know, uh, we, we see, look at the audience and they might want to hear this next, you know. So uh, I've got it pretty good. I have no complaints. I might get some eye rolls from some people, but that philosophy of performing is comparable to professional wrestling, which is a world I'm into. Some people mm -hmm. will rehearse their match and choreograph it down to the T and stick to it. Other people go out and they, they, they call it on the fly, as we say, because they listen to the crowd. So you pay attention to the crowd and you, you go with the show depending on how they respond. That's how you approach every show. Yes, sir. And and it's more exciting. It keeps it fresh. We have about three and a half evenings worth of material, um, the band and I. And so we, we get we can pick from a lot of songs, you know. So you kind of will look out at the crowd at the ranch here in Barrie and know pretty quickly what kind of a night you're in for? Well, um, I, I don't think of it that way. I think, what will we start with? You know, and then and like I look at the audience. What, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start easy and then build up and, you know, or start with a bang? Or uh, It's really fun, you know. And, and then after that, just let it flow. If someone's going to come for the first time, maybe it's a date. Maybe it's someone in a group of friends and they're like, yeah, I've, I've heard some David Wilcox. How would you describe your experience to someone who's never seen it before? They've never had a David Wilcox experience. What would they be in for? Well, I tell them that it's a party band. It's fun. It's meant to be a fun evening. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll take you up a bit, down a bit, surprise you a little bit. Something may be familiar, maybe not, you know. So, uh, but it's it's meant to be a party experience. Is there anything going back to like we talked about the pop music of today and the the, the questionable content? Is there anything of uh, today that you're into? Anything you're listening to that's keeping uh, keeping your ears young? That's inspiring you? I, I listen to all kinds of music. Um, uh, if I incidentally hear current pop music, um, then I, I there's things I enjoy. But I mean, I think Ed Sheeran, really great artist. You know, uh, different people. But uh, I I listen to everything from from jazz to classical to ragtime to roots music. A lot of roots music, because that's, I think, we're a roots rock and roll band, really. Well, I wanted to take the time uh, to have a little fun with some of the songs from different generations over the years. And uh, you, you're a heck of a, a good sport for agreeing to take a look at what some would call emojis. But do you remember the uh, old game show Classic Concentration that you have to build mm -hmm. sentences with the pitchers? Well, I've done that with some of your songs, and I thought, I wonder if he can recognize his own songs in those image forms. So this scares me. I'll, I'll, I'll take a crack at it, but I mean, if I wipe out, do I get fired? I think we'll just know David Wilcox is being real. He's being real. Okay. So here's the first one. It's three images, but that first one. It looks like a, a multicolored. This is like a Rorschach test. A multicolored picture frame, uh, and then in. Okay. And then it looks like a pill bottle. I don't know what that is. Uh, so, okay, well, um, Money in the Bank. That's a great guess. Have you ever played Super Mario Brothers, the video game? Um, no, probably not. Maybe for a moment, but not really. Okay. So that's a pipe from Super Mario Brothers. That's the pipe that Mario goes down. And that... Lay in pipe. You got it. Lay. lay. Oh, it's a lay. Pipe. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm glad you're helping me through this. Uh, okay, it's not the so best I, visual representation of a lay. I will admit okay. that. Here's a here's a little longer one. Okay, um, Thai, uh, Buddha, 
and chips. I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Ben. I don't know what that is. What part of the body is that? That'll be your clue to start off with. That's the hip or the, the, the I guess the hip. Uh, a hypnotizing boogie. Hip no right. tie zen and then booger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got you there. That's Hypnotize good. Hypnotize and booger. All right. This is the third one, and I figured uh, you're either going to appreciate this or just have a laughing fit, but it's one picture that represents one of your songs. Okay. Uh, golly. Well, they look like they're on vacation, and they're talking, and uh, I'm afraid I, I have no idea what that is. Well, for the real David Wilcox diehards, you might notice they're not talking. They're kind of laying in, in ecstasy. Oh, okay. So, well, we already did lay in... <laughs> um, uh, I, I, in ecstasy. Um, oh, God. Okay. I, I, I give up. I'm sorry. I... After your orgasm. I didn't... Is that one of my songs? <laughs> oh, this leads us into how we're going to be giving away tickets. Uh, all this week on my afternoon show for your show at the ranch. And we're going to play a game called will Cox or won't Cox. And question number one is going to be, did David Wilcox release a song called after your orgasm? And people are going to okay. call to answer that question and get those tickets. So you and I know the answer, but uh, good. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you for being a good it. sport and uh, talking all about uh, music today, music yesterday. We cannot wait to see what you've got in store for us at the ranch. So can't wait. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you.